Hello and welcome to this video series aiming to teach you how to build your own RESTful APIs with the Dart programming language and the Aqueduct framework written in Dart. What we're going to be doing in this series is building an API for a reading list covering five main parts. These are namely part one will be setting up a running the example project that will be generated using the Aqueduct scaffolding tool. In part two we'll be implementing routing with some basic CRUD operations. Part three will be connecting the web API endpoints that we create to our SQL database. Part four will be writing some automated tests using Aqueduct's integrated testing library. And part five will be creating a user interface which will be used to interact with our API. With this video in particular, we'll be looking at setting up and running the example. If you haven't already, download the Dart SDK. It contains all the tools you need to code with me in this series. Just go to the link appearing on the screen and download the SDK. So what exactly is Aqueduct? Aqueduct is essentially a server-side framework that allows you to create and deploy RESTful web APIs. It's got similarities to alternatives like Express or Happy, even .NET Web API, so it will look familiar if you've got experience with any of the other frameworks. It offers a range of features, namely a routing style that is fluid and chainable. This allows you to compose your routes with its handler methods while adopting a functional style. It has a CLI tool, meaning we can generate the boilerplate for our next project by running some terminal commands. It supports multi-threading out of the box, which means that we can spin up multiple instances of our application via Dart's isolates, which essentially are background threads. It has an inbuilt object relational mapper, which is pretty useful when working with SQL databases, and it supports database migration. It has an integrated testing library and plays well with tools like Travis CI. Now assuming that you have Dart already installed, this gives you access to its package management tool called pub, allowing you to install Aqueduct by running pub global activate Aqueduct. This places the Aqueduct executable in a global location, making it available in the terminal. Once we've created our working directory and we see the into it, let's create our project by running Aqueduct create, followed by the name of the project. We will also cd into this project once successfully created and open this in your text editor of choice. Looking at the generated project, we will be focusing on three particular files. The main.dart file, located in the bin subfolder. This creates the instance for an Aqueduct application and runs it. Fave reads sync dot dart in the lib subfolder. This contains what is known as a request sync that sets up our application, enabling it to receive requests from the client. The pubspec.yaml. This is in the project root, which contains metadata about the Dart project similar to having a package.json for Node.js development. We can run the application by opening the terminal and entering Aqueduct serve. This will be running on the localhost over the port number displayed in the terminal, which at the time of this recording is 8081. An application requires a request sync to enable it to start receiving requests, which will be passed through the routes we have defined. All routes are defined in the setup router method of our favorites sync class. We have one route going to the example path with JSON data sent back as a response. The default response type is set to JSON for requests. However, this can be set to whatever content type is appropriate to meet our needs. We can demonstrate this by defining a route for the root path of our application. Using a Dart feature called method cascades, we are able to set the content type property of the response object to plain text. The content type is a utility class that comes inbuilt with Dart and has preset values for text, HTML, JSON and binary. 
In fact, we can also rewrite this as which also gives us the same response of plain text. Let's stop and start the server again. And take a look at the response. Before we wrap up, let's scale our application instances to the number of processes we have. When we return to main.dart, we see that it's currently set to 2 when the application starts. The issue here is that it's not really scalable since the remaining cores on our machine remains unused. So in order to resolve this, we're going to import Dart's platform class from the dart io library we will then amend the number of instances as follows this will ensure that our application scales across all the cpu cores on our machine let's save and restart the server this time by running dart followed by the path to the main dart file. We now see the app scaling across the number of processes we have and also the port number is based on the configuration in our main dart file. Let's see what this looks like in the browser. And this concludes part one of the series. The code for this is available on GitHub and will be updated as we go through the series. The link can also be found in the video description below. There is also a supporting article on Medium at the link displayed on the screen. To learn more about Google Dart, go to dartlang.org and also visit aqueduct.io for more information about the Aqueduct framework. Do like and subscribe if you found this tutorial useful and click the notification icon to be updated when new videos are released. Thanks for watching.